UFP, the United Federation of Podcasts. Good morning. I'm Chrissy DeClerc Salagi. And I'm Jason Salagi. Welcome to the History with the Salagis podcast on the United Federation of Podcasts Network. Today's topic is us, who we are, why we love history, and what you can expect to hear on this show. First, our personal history and bona fides. Jay, tell the audience about yourself and why you became an historian. Well, my love of history began very early in life uh, from hearing the stories of my uh, grandfather on my mother's side who had served in the Merchant Marine in the Second World War. So I got to hear about stories of him running convoys in the Atlantic uh, Ocean, the Mediterranean, the Pacific Ocean. So as I heard more of those, I was curious as to why he went to war. And my love of history also was with my father's family. I heard a lot of stories from him as I was growing up, discussing the fact that he and his parents and siblings had come over to the United States after the Second World War as displaced persons. Uh, Before I was born, I lost my grandfather and my uncles, uh, so I never got to meet them. And just hearing little bits and pieces about uh, the family's history really kind of put this drive into me to figure out what exactly had happened. And as I started to read more and more history, I realized that there are aren't really that many answers. There's just more questions that crop up. So from about the age of seven until now, (laughs) I've just been obsessed with history, trying to find more and more information. Um, And and that's kind of the the cool part about it is for me, to a degree, it's a a personal quest to find out more of this. And in the same sense, uh, with my students and just friends, if I can help them understand a little bit more of why the world is the way it is, then I feel like I'm paying some of it forward. That's a wonderful reason to be interested in history, and I have some of that as well, but we'll get to me in a moment. So I'm betting our listeners uh, are already figuring that you have an expertise in the world wars, and you can get into that, but uh, in addition to the world wars, why don't you tell them about what else you study? I study uh, military history in general. Uh, That was the first thing that kind of got me involved in history. Um, And then, of course, that led to a deeper understanding and study of both world wars. Uh, But when I started my undergraduate and graduate work, I really was attracted to finding out more about the Middle East. Um, And my undergraduate advisor was one of the best at that that particular subject. Uh, And so... You can plug him if you want. (laughs) That's true, I can't. Dr. John Robertson... Uh, at Central Michigan University was my undergraduate advisor. And I fell in love with the ancient uh, and modern Middle East from him. And so that's what I specialized in when I went into my graduate studies. Um, My graduate advisor, uh, Eric Johnson, also from Central Michigan University, uh, he did German history and Holocaust history. And so they kind of fit together very well um, because I uh, did a lot of my graduate work on the Holocaust and the formation of modern Israel. Um, And then eventually I I took over those classes. And right now I'm uh, the advisor for Middle Eastern and Islamic studies. So it's kind of cool. Transition from student to, I won't say master, because that sounds (laughs) uh, too much like Darth Vader, but it's kind of fun. Student to master of arts. There we go. (laughs) That's the way. Yeah, that sounds better. (laughs) And... Let our listeners know what you do when you're not studying history. When I'm not studying history, I love to watch and read uh, horror and sci-fi. I have a lifelong passion with the undead, so to speak. Uh, (laughs) I love zombie movies. The first zombie movie I ever saw was with my mom on Halloween. Uh, It was Night of the Living Dead, the original with George Romero. Uh, I had the flu, so I couldn't go out and trick or treat. So we sat in the living room uh, watching that. And I remember my mom saying, uh, this is going to scare you so much. Instead of scaring me, it made me just obsessed with that idea. <laughs> so 
<laughs> so any zombie movie, even the really terrible ones, I force Chrissy to watch with me occasionally. This is true. Uh, and if I'm not watching zombie movies, I'm either reading or watching uh, Star Wars or Star Trek. Uh, when I'm not doing that, I uh, collect and paint Warhammer miniatures. Uh, if I'm not doing that, then I'm playing uh, Sid Meier's Civilization or other uh, computer and console games. All right. So, Chrissy, tell the audience about yourself and why you became a historian. Okay, well, um, I was going to be a paleontologist when I grew up, so I liked history from the beginning. It was just, uh, went back a little further, a little less writing for the dinosaurs than there are for uh, we humans. Pre-literate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in terms of, of history, and I'll come back to the paleontology thing, but in terms of history, um, I, I really started getting interested in history, I uh, blamed my father, or thanked my father, uh, because... He was involved in reenacting, uh, you know, most people think of reenacting as something that you do with the American Civil War. Recently, you've seen uh, more reenacting of, of the World Wars. Jay, you were in on some of that. I'm sure that'll come up over the course of our episodes here. Oh, yes. Uh, but he did French fur trader reenacting. Okay, so think uh, around the era of the American Revolution, uh, you had all these these lone fur traders that were out, and they would do the uh, collecting. And then they would come together a couple times a year at what were called rendezvous, and that's when they would sell their pelts and exchange news and all of that type of thing. So I spent a lot of summer weekends when I was around six, seven, and that age uh, with my dad, uh, basically pretending to be a French fur trader, <laughs> you know. And it intrigued me. Um and I went from there to reading uh, uh, a lot of American colonial history, because that's what that was, essentially. Um, but I, I kept that idea of being a paleontologist. So after I got done with high school and I did a couple of years at the local community college, always do your first few years at the local community college, much better than running off to a university right away. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because I work at three different community colleges. <laughs> but uh, I decided I was going to go to get a geology degree and I was going to go to the University of Wyoming. Now, I grew up in Michigan, uh, but University of Wyoming was uh, is still an excellent school for geology. And it's also because uh, Wyoming has such a small population, it's the only four-year school in the state and they get all the funding. So it's really cheap to go there too, comparatively speaking. But I picked it because it's a good school, not... The cheap was just an added benefit. And so while I was there, uh, I went through my first two semesters, uh, still intending to become a paleontologist and geologist. Uh, and then I ran into Calc 3 uh, and organic chemistry and mineralogy, <laughs> all in the same semester. And I uh, wanted to scream. But that same semester, I was also filling a required history credit with a class on ancient Rome. And I realized how much I loved Roman history and that connection just, it really, really clicked. And so I switched from history that was, you know, a hundred million years old to just a few thousand years old. Uh, so my specialties really, you know, whatever I can teach, cause I'm an adjunct, we're both adjuncts and uh, our bread and butter is, uh, you know, Western slash world civ, depending on the school and U S history uh, and, and here, because we're in Michigan, uh, we both teach Michigan history as well. Uh, but uh, colonial North America has remained uh, an, an interest of mine and one that I uh, have been working with recently. Uh, the Roman Revolution is my favorite era, though. And you're going to say, what's the Roman Revolution? Well, the Roman Revolution is the era of turnover from republic to empire. Think Julius Caesar and Caesar Augustus in that era, uh, and that is the Roman Revolution. And there will be caffeinated histories on elements of the Roman Revolution, so don't worry about learning on that. <laughs> and then uh, uh, I also study women's history uh, in any era, any and every era. Uh, women's history is, is a relatively young subsection of history. It's really only been properly done for about the last 80 years or so, give or take. And there's a lot of material that's out there 
that needs to be integrated into the history that we're used to reading the politics and the, the societal changes and all of that because women are involved in every last bit of it. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's why I'm an historian and and what I have expertise in. And what are you doing when you're not studying all that history? <laughs> yeah, uh, it feels like that's never, but <laughs> if you count grading, I should say, um, there's always uh, the teaching work, which I love. I love, I love. Um, but I'm a huge Trekkie. Uh, the, this is on the UFP network. You have likely heard me on uh, the show Infinite Diversity here on the UFP network. Uh, if you've heard me there, you've heard about Chrissy's History Corner. And uh, that was kind of part of the genesis of this podcast right here. Uh, so super Trekkie. Uh, I do a lot of reading, reading of Star Trek books, reading of history, of course. Uh, that can be interesting because drawing the line between reading history for fun versus reading history for work is, uh, is sometimes difficult. Um, I'm a bit of a politics junkie. I, uh, uh, I'm quite left and I like to read and listen to politics stuff. I, uh, if you're looking for suggestions after you've listened to our podcasts and of course the other UFP podcasts uh, on our network here, uh, Democracy Now! is an excellent news source. Uh, the Majority Report with Sam Cedar. Uh, those two I make a point of listening to pretty much every day. Uh, and then also from way back, I'm a, a Super Mario, uh, a lover of Super Mario games. Um, I've jokingly said that every Nintendo system I've bought uh, was just a new way for me to play the original Super Mario Brothers. Uh, and, and there's not a small amount of truth in that. But recently, like everybody else, uh, during the pandemic, I got uh, in, into Animal Crossing. And so if anybody else is playing Animal Crossing and you want to share friend codes, I'm down for that. Uh, lately, I've been playing a little Fall Guys, too. Uh, and uh, there's a new game called Traveler's Rest, which is a lot of fun. Fits into the history thing because it's kind of a medieval tavern setting. So there you go. So you, have, you can't get away from history. So that's me. So now let's talk about us. Right? We met working at Barnes & Noble. Because if nothing else, uh, if we describe ourselves as historians first... We probably will describe ourselves as lovers of reading and books second, or we might do that first and historians second. So working at Barnes & Noble just seemed like a good idea for both of us. Except for the fact that a lot of times it felt like we were giving our checks directly back because yes. we had a, uh, we and we still do, have quite a substantial library on a lot of different subjects. Yeah. So it was nice to start working there in a time in our lives when we did not have bills yet. <laughs> right. So Jay had been working at Barnes & Noble. You hired in in 98. Yep. And then I hired in for Christmas in 99 uh, and then ended up staying. So we worked together for three and a half years, three years, give or take, before I went away to school. And then I came back and uh, went back to the bookstore because uh, I wasn't really sure what else to do with myself because I hadn't gotten into grad school at that point. And I'm so glad that I didn't get into grad school and had to come back to the bookstore because, uh, you know, there we are. So when Chrissy came back, it was just as Star Wars Episode Three was going to be released. And a bunch of us from the store had decided we were going to go see it opening night. Uh, and so everybody had their tickets. Uh, we ended up getting an extra ticket somehow. And I had told Chrissy, I was like, hey, why don't you just come with us? Uh, my sister, uh, Lisa, and I were going to go with the Barnes & Noble group. And so we're sitting there waiting for everybody to show up. And then Chrissy shows up. And she and I just start talking. And Lisa likes to explain it as the night I abandoned her. Uh, but she gained a sister. Because <laughs> we were sitting. I was sitting between the two of them. And I was talking to Chrissy more than I was talking to Lisa. And... <laughs> Yeah. I have never really, uh, it's, it's been a point of laughter uh, and, and gentle ribbing between my sister and I about this particular night. Um, but it was, it was fun because we were able to reconnect after a couple of years. Uh, and I'm sure everybody at the store was probably rolling their eyes every time we worked together at customer service or registers because all we talked about was history. <laughs> when we weren't waiting on somebody and I'm sure everybody was like, Oh my God, please make them stop. <laughs> yeah. Well, or they were asking us questions about 
connecting current events and historical context. You you became quite well known as the the guy who could explain why anything was happening. That's true. As our friend Eddie used to say, we were uh, living encyclopedias. <laughs> yes, between the two of us. Uh, what what he doesn't have, what I don't have in the military history, and he doesn't have in the cultural history, we we fit together pretty well. So I, I think that works out. And uh, as I always uh, jokingly, half jokingly say to my students, make sure to find a partner with whom you will be competing for jobs because that just makes it so much more fun. Yeah. But there is something to be said for that because uh, if either one of us needs a sub, the other one doesn't have class at that time, it's easy for us to take over. So, you know, there, there is that. Yeah, that's always a bonus. Yep. So that's pretty much all there is about us. Um, we have We have some cats. Uh, if you again, if you've heard Infinite Diversity, you've you've heard uh, uh, one of our cats, Buster. Uh, he he's sneezed on the mic account on a couple of occasions, and he's also the official Grudge the Cat correspondent for Star Trek Discovery for Infinite Diversity. Uh, and we have some other cats too. If you follow us on Twitter, uh, you will see pictures of them. I guarantee it. Yes, our uh, <laughs> black and white cat. Uh, his name is Gus, or his full name, Gustavus Adolphus. Named after the Swedish king in the Thirty Years' War, uh, I I was reading a book on him at the time, and I was like, "Well, he kind of looks like a lion of the north, so let's call him that." Yeah, it worked out. It worked out. It fits in well. Yes, he occasionally shows up in our lectures. That's true as well. Uh, right. So that's us. Uh, Jay, why don't you tell our audience about this podcast they're going to be listening to? Okay, well, our show is going to start with a twice-weekly podcast called Caffeinated History, which will give you an overview of a particular topic in history. Uh, we do need suggestions for topics, so please don't hesitate to tweet us at Salagi History with your ideas. Uh, we're very open to uh, finding different topics that people have not really talked about or heard too much about, uh, and it kind of makes it a little bit nice because it, it can lead into connecting what's happening in the current world. Yes, we're, we're always, one of the most important things about studying history is knowing why things are the way they are now. Uh, so that's a big part of how we, we conduct ourselves as historians as well. Uh, we're, we're both, uh, how to put it, we're both great believers in the uh, Howard Zinn School of History in that history is, uh, well, interesting in and of itself, it also can serve a purpose and be part of one's understanding of society and oneself and one's own culture and, and all of that. So uh, history is just important for everyone, no matter what you're doing. So, uh, Jay, where can people find you if they want to talk history? You can find me in our threads on the Federation Council Chambers and on Twitter at Jason Dark Elf. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure he's more than willing to discuss zombies and Star Wars and all the rest of that too. Oh, <laughs> more him. Definitely. Uh, Chrissy, where can people find you if they want to talk history? All right. Well, you can find me, as I mentioned earlier, on another show on the United Federation of Podcast Network, and that is Infinite Diversity. And that's where we talk about 21st Century Trek. I'm also going to be in the Federation Council Chambers, of course, discussing things on the Threads for Infinite Diversity and our other shows. And I'm on Twitter at the Goddess Livia, and that is spelled T H E G O D D E S S L I V I A. We'd like to make a point right now of thanking the executive producers of the UFP Network, Brandon Shane Mutala, Ken Tripp, Zach Moore, and Tony Robinson. We are so thankful and happy to have this opportunity to be on the UFP Network. Thanks, guys. Yes, thank you very much. Well, thanks for listening. We'd love to hear what you think. If you want to reach out, you can find the network on Twitter at UFP Earth or contact our show directly by email HWTS at UFP.Earth or Twitter at Salagi History. Uh, that's S Z I L A G Y I History. We also need topic suggestions. What would you like to learn on Caffeinated History?
This has been a production of MTMR Media Works.